right, today we're going to be building this flat pack fire pit that's got a patriotic theme to it that I designed. Um, to start that off, we're going to have to do some plasma cutting. So I went ahead and measured out my material, nested all my parts together, and started the cutting process. I designed this fire pit to be cut out of 8 inch mild steel. It's a tab and slot design, meaning that it can be broken down um, and packed away flat so that you can put it in your trunk and take it camping with you. I wanted to keep camping in mind with this, that's why I made it lighter weight. Most of my fire pits are made out of quarter inch or 3 16 steel, so they'd be a lot heavier. Um, they're a lot heavier duty, but they're also, you know, you don't want to transport 150 pounds of fire pit when you're going camping. Um, so I made this into a flat pack design so it can be put away in your trunk and you can stack your coolers and your other camping gear on top of it and not even know it's there until um, you set up your campsite and then you can take out your fire pit and assemble it in about three minutes and you're good to go. Here I'm just using a small shower squeegee to wipe off all the parts and dry them off. Um, this actually works really well. I, I plasma cut for about three years before I you know, decided to, to use one of these and I wish I would have done this three years ago. Um, they work great and uh, it, it gets all my parts dry so I don't lose a lot of my liquid out of my table and get it all over my floors or my uh, welding bench. It just keeps it where it belongs. So here was a time that I realized that um, the tolerances that I, I left for the tabs and slots for the side panels of this fire pit um, weren't big enough. So with plasma, uh, if you already you know, run a plasma table, you know that there's a, a bevel that happens with the cuts and there's a certain kerf that, um, or width, uh, if you want to say it that way, of the plasma arc itself. And I didn't take that um, into account perfectly on these tabs and slots, so they weren't fitting together. So what I had to do was um, just take my grinder and open those up a little bit. Literally, I just had to kind of touch the bottom edge where it had, you know, if it, it bevels the most, which means your tolerances at the bottom of a cut um, are going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot tighter down there than it is up at the top of the cut um, due to the bevel. So I just took my grinder out with a cutoff wheel on it and just skimmed the edges uh, just to knock off that bottom edge a little bit and that opened it up just enough for these to slide together correctly. Overall, the fit up on this fire pit wasn't the best. Um, it was definitely a learning experience. This one's actually for myself to take camping during the summers, but it worked out pretty good. It gave me a you know a good trial run before I start making customer fire pits of this design. Um, now I know what to open up the slots for and um, what my new tolerances should be. 
All right, here it is all said and done. I decided not to paint this one because I knew with taking it apart and putting it back together over and over again, it was just going to get scratched up um, and rust in certain areas, and I would rather have the whole thing kind of have a natural patina to it than um, just to rust in some spots and be painted in others. It lays completely flat, and it's actually small enough to fit in a trash bag, so if you are to take it camping, you can throw it in your trunk in a trash bag, and it won't get the rest of your camping stuff dirty, and it won't get your trunk dirty. Well, whether it was what to do or what not to do, I hope you're able to learn something from this video. And if you like this video and want to see others like it, make sure you like and subscribe so that you get notifications of new postings.